gatekeeper team for Southeast Asia. I'm wondering if that's starting to shift now that you have teams like TNC with more international experience. Happy yeah. Feet went to a couple of them as well. I, I don't think it's definitely not as clear cut as it was this entire season of Faceless being top of C and everybody else down there. No. It's much more open now. I definitely agree. I think Faceless uh, less clearly the front runner in SEA, but. I think I don't have as much faith in Moogle as maybe other people. I, I, I love Miracle. <laughs> yeah. He's a good kid, incredibly talented, has come up with some very innovative ways to play Dota. But, and I think he's definitely going to play some maybe a top tier team, but I don't think that is that top tier team. There's a reason he left Singapore to go play with the guys at Mineski and came very close to making it. And then he went over to Fnatic before he kind of got replaced Five by Ajit um, because this team wasn't cutting it. Mm -hmm. he's, yep. This is kind of his backup plan. So Whoa. we'll see. There's a reason why he left those pl teams Dying as well. Team. Uh, I think knowing Miracle, he's, I don't want to say a hard teammate to work with, but he, everywhere he goes to, he's like, I miss home. Like, I miss the food I eat in Singapore. I miss. He the, didn't leave the, Fnatic. He got kicked. I was going to say. Well, no, like, it, it, well, no, more, more so for Mineski included. time. <laughs> Like, okay, I, I just yeah, know that know about yeah. every so time right. he was on Mineski, I've heard, like, Singapore, all he does is complain. I miss he didn't leave. Like, okay. Fnatic, I miss my home. I, I was going to say. Well, no, He's like, like kid, well, right, no, more, so. more Yeah. One of the reasons. But, uh, yeah, but I do agree with you guys. I, I don't think this Radiant is the team, but team I, I I could see them perhaps sneaking into top four, or rather top five. Like, they won't they won't be the team that wins the, the first slot. No. They'll right. likely cause some upsets, I think. I right. mean, I think they have the ability to take a game here or there, if, like a, one, even one of the best teams, like a faceless, if they have, like, a really good draft and play really well. But remaining. I see them winning maybe three, four, five games, perhaps sneaking into the top five, like Lumi says, five but remaining. probably not taking one of those top three slots. Well, this is both their first game, and I think if you're Moogle here, Part of me would probably expect them to almost be happy that they're facing a team like Faceless, because you know Faceless, they're still they maybe kind of get that rust. Up. Not that they have a lot of rust by any means, but again, this is their first game too of the night and getting ready for this very important event that they're kind of expected to move on. Uh, so maybe that's where they can catch them off guard even. So we'll see if they take advantage of that. They're going to do so with a Lena pick so far. Nyx Assassin Silencer coming out for Faceless here. Both like teams pretty open. Like Nyx can. Four position can off lane, silencer, same thing. Not the rolls, but can go multiple lanes, can go mid, can go support. Lena's mid or support as well. That support last game was a little bit rough. Villa's a little bit lacking, and yep. I don't know. But I, I, I agree. Um, and I think that, like, Lena to me Witch feels to be the dominant mid laner of right now. Maybe back. TA is that other one. Um, and it does really well against Lena as well. The Witch Doctor is a little bit interesting. Okay. Um, I think that they just wanted to, you know, shore up those lanes again. It makes me think that it is going to be Lena mid, though, because Witch Doctor Lena feels Ten like it's kind of remaining. awkward. They do the yep. same type of thing. I, so I find right this really strange. You're picking Five Witch Doctor into remaining. a silencer. That means your your death ward is generally not going to get a very long successful channel. Uh, the one big thing that you get out of Witch Doctor here is the ability to zone on Nyx Assassin. I've seen Witch Doctor go Maledic at one, and mm -hmm. normally Nyx is like, haha, I trade hits, I regen, but if you take too much damage and there's a level one Malik on you early on, you can just get completely forced out the lane. So I wonder if that's the reason why they pick uh, the the Witch Doctor here early, or are they thinking of something like a Faces Void as one of their core position and combo it off there, or somebody that can blow up Silencer and find him like a Storm or something? Sure. Although they can't really again, like, like for example, run Lena's support, but I, I don't really like it. I, I mean, I also think there's something to be said for just picking up a comp comfort by position support in the first two picks. Like, I imagine, like, their, <coughs> their support play is probably just like, yeah, I feel good on Witch Doctor. Okay. Like, you look at maybe their open qualifier run. I think a lot of teams will just find, like, that by position support that works and then just keep re-picking re re it. Faceless did that for ages with uh, Witch Doctor and Warlock themselves. Yeah. So there's definitely something to be said for just sticking with a five position that you just play most games. Ten seconds remaining. They ban an Invoker here, definitely great synergy with a hero like Nyx Assassin, of course. Beautiful setup for Sunstrike, so not going to give in on that option. Clockwork ban on the side of Faceless, as well as that Venno Omni Knight that we had initially right there. So, yeah, Omni Knight, throw it in there right from the beginning here for Faceless. Don't want to get cheesed with such hero, perhaps. Silencer, is there a direction we're maybe leaning towards as far as a core or a support here? Um, I think knowing Faceless, they mostly run it like uh, Nuts Hero. I don't generally see Black playing in mid. So, yeah. I, I think I'd I mean, they, could, like they could pull it out, but. I think I'd be like, yeah, 60 40 or 70 30 it being a support, more likely. Yeah. Um, 
but I think Faceless themselves have, I mean, it's one of those things where when we, when we're saying it can be run too late, the team's probably thinking a similar thing where they haven't even fully decided themselves they want to leave the option open to run it either way, depending what their opponents pick. I guess you know the mid matchup, the Lina, so you may be, I think Silencer is one of the better mids to play against Lina, but still not an easy matchup. Lina's just incredibly strong. And they'll have last pick too, so they're really comfortable taking all of these heroes that are very, you know, back and forth with Nyx. We talked about three or four five silencer, two or five yeah. or whatever. I, I expect to see that. Maybe they either take Reserve their four here five. or their off lane, depending, and double down. You're right in that. Yep. <coughs> Grab a bat. One of Ice Ice Ice's best heroes, I'd say. And something that will give them a. Uh, Way to just keep fighting. Two, they've got two initiators with Bat and Nyx Assassin now. And Bat Silencer has always been a, a great combo. You've got that instant initiation, the blink lasso, and then you just pop global. You can't, you can't react to the Bat Rider if you're you're silenced. I mean, we we saw that combo last game, right? How was it there? Did it perform big time for you? For for yeah, I believe it was TNC. TNC. Yeah. yeah. Were solid. They won the game. You know, they yeah. won. They, they won. The, they won the team fights. They, there was yep. no way. Anytime there was a team fight with global up, they were winning easily. There was yeah. a few times where they maybe used the global at a bad time or overreacted with it, and then they'd lose Roche or they'd lose towers because of it. So the, the global was a, a key tool for them. So now, like you look at one draft, and it's pretty clear that you know what it is that Moogle are going to be doing. Lena mid, Witch right. Doctor five, Steve Kunkka five. in the four roll. And now, like, they know everything to what expect, at least as far as, like, the early game rotations are going to be. Um, and they're going to take the Lifestealer, so I don't think that Kunkka's really going to be able to do much <coughs> in those lanes. I'm assuming now that this is a 5 silencer, then. Yeah, very, very likely now, I'd say. But similarly, you may just look at that hero pool when you get to your fifth pick and say, there's not much left. Let's uh, pick another 5 position support, but... I think that's not likely. Faces is a team who, as mentioned, always would just pick up their five position support in the first two. They just pick a warlock or a witch doctor first two and be happy with it. Lifestealer seems like he's going to be really strong in this game. He has a couple of transport targets in both the Bat Rider and the Nyx Assassin, very good ones at that. And then, of course, all the magic presence there on the other side, Rage is going to be a very viable tool for Lifestealer. So. Definitely a strong pick. And now the fourth one from Moogle coming out. They still need their one position as well as their own offlane. You probably figure here. Yep. I think there's... I definitely love what Faces have done with their draft. I think there were a few tricks Moogle could have done to catch him by surprise. The Drow Ranger was one, and that option's been taken away. That's kind of one of, like, the cheese-type strats that you can always bust out. So that's no longer an option. So I think Draw Moogle out. are going to have to just... I'll play them at execute. Jug, like kind of a standard, say, pick. Nothing wrong with it this game, but uh, it just feels like it, th it doesn't blow me away as a, a great pick for dealing with Faceless. Jug into Life Slayer. I don't think he wins a man fight there, does he? What do you mean the Jug? You don't think the Jug does? All right, this meme is not catching on. Never mind. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Uh, I, I'm not picking up what you're putting down. I'm too that. young for this. <laughs> <laughs> you guys didn't watch the fact that BSJ had a, had a thing? With 1v1 between Jack and Life. No, uh, no, I missed that one. Oh, okay. But well, well, I was, was like, where that. are you going with this? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, the but uh, ba ah, back okay. in this draft, uh, I think Jug matches up against Life Slayer very well. The, the other carry I had in mind was something like PA, something that could kind of just be able to man fight Life Slayer one versus one. But the ability to have a lot of magic and physical damage for Mugo is, I think, a very strong uh, part. Mm. And also, if you get to spin when Bat Rider jumps on you with Lasso, like if you could react quickly enough and, and pop off your spin, then I feel like Juggernaut just will survive that Lasso overall. I don't know. I feel like Mugo might be a little bit behind and yeah, he's still big tough. pick from the third phase, I mean, like the KB Pearson. Yeah, the problem <coughs> is like that Lasso just, even if you're spinning, they're still, if they, I, they may even go for a physical damage mid just to have more physical onto that spinning Jug. Mm -hmm. Um, theoretically, because really? you're global silence. There's no defense. You can't use your Kunkka ship, your X to stop the lasso if you're silenced after the lasso. So it could be kind of tough for them. So but Moogle bans out Naga with their final potential ban, uh, or what could have been potential pick. Strong laning heroes that are annoying for Lifestealer. That's where Legion gets banned out. The other hero you'd see sometimes would be like the Omni Knight type heroes that can be annoying to deal with, but I don't like Omni versus the Silencer so much. You can yeah, build yeah, Greaves yeah. or something, but... It was banned first up there, Oh, too. okay, never mind, no Omni. Just Maybe kidding. Beastmaster. And you got a lot of push uh, with Jug already, the Healing Ward, Witch Doctor Dusk. heals. Ooh. Tusk Husk. Core or Kunk Core? Yeah, what is going on here now? Is this going to be a trial and aggressive? 
got Perhaps? Snowball as a save for Lasso, kind of. But again, you need like a way to get rid of the silence, maybe, which could be saying Tusk builds into. For faces like, I like OD here. Uh, you want a, a mid that could save pretty much anybody from Kunkka, right? Like, X Torn combo is not going to be a thing anymore. A four stat okay. builder that allows you to get around the Tusk quite nicely. The lane matchup against Lina might be a bit rough, but. I mean, that's that's oh. any hero except like TA, and I don't right, think. Right, so. <laughs> I don't think TA is like an amazing pick for their draft as a whole. But but there is that thing that you mentioned, Gods, where if you pick up a physical carry, then no matter if Jug is spinning or not, you just like plow through him. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and OD does not give that to you. So. What about like Ember Spirit here? Faceless. I was actually oh. thinking about that to push out the lanes that, on the side. It's a rough ma matchup, oh. but it, there's not much Bristol, stun Bristol for him. Back. Bristol this game here that kind of shrugs off a lot of the damage coming out on him. <coughs> Black will be playing it in the mid lane. Interesting. I, I definitely like Faces drafts overall. I think I don't, I'm not like blown away by this Bristol pick. I just felt like those first three heroes, uh, and I think the Life Sealer fits their draft really well. As much as Jug can win a man fight, like kind of in the one v one versus the Life Sealer, it's it's not going to come down to that kind of a scenario. It's going to come down to Faceless having the better team fight and the better initiation in my mind. It's potential for Silver Edge to be even a little bit more viable this game, and they have heroes. I mean, I get, like, Lena and Juggernaut are ones that you would normally see it on all the time by any means, but... You could even get it on Tusk, you know, if he's yeah, farmed enough. Yeah, that's true. Damn. It's a, definitely a pub, Bill. Mm -hmm. You know what it could be? Tusk Ags. Get it core, oh, kick that lifestealer away. away. You can. <laughs> you that's can. the way to play it. Yeah. I'm excited. Five, who's, what, who's, uh, <laughs> what position is Kai on the roster? Because I'm not familiar with these players and Polison. Polison is the third. Yeah. Okay. And, uh... Miracle is the one. Chip is the two. All right, so getting ready to get into game one of, well, they're all game ones, but <laughs> getting ready to get into this one here, the debut match for both of these teams, Faceless versus Moogle. Again, looking to start strong here. Faceless, no doubt, the favorite team, but Moogle with Miracle. Brass has a shot. You think, they, you think uh, predictions, Lyrical, real quickly. Um, I think that if they go Tusk Ags, they win, and Nations if they don't, they lose. Out. I'm going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's far, man. Gods? I'm with Faceless. I think they're the better team, and I actually prefer their draft for this one, so I'll go with them as well. All right. Well, well let's go with them. Yeah. Thanks for you guys for joining us here, but now we got our game into it here. Myself and Luminous. Luminous, who do you got? Uh, I'm going to go with Faceless as well. I feel like one thing that Mugo is going to struggle with in the mid game is their damage output. Tusk is not a hero notoriously for his... I mean, he's more for the utility, for the control. But unless you get super farm with a Tusk, he really lacks damage. I, I feel like Lina, there's a lot of weight on her shoulder. Uh, she probably needs to p pick up an Aghanim Scepter as well, just to be able to pierce through the magic immunity of life to her. Uh, so that's one less item that she could get for, like, uh, let's say, uh, Shadow Blade or, or Yules or whatnot. Yeah. So I, I think overall, the Mugo team is really pressured to do very well in the laning stage. Um, if not, they're going to struggle with damage output in the mid game to with some of these very tanky heroes like Bristleback, Lifestealer, even a support lineup like Nyx is just a tanky support. See this warding position early on, a very aggressive middle ward coming out from the side of Moogle here. Is there any uh, reason, a specific reason you think why they're doing that? I think actually that's a pretty common ward spot. If you could get it out early, it, it really gives your mid laner a lot of uh, leeway to play aggressive or play defensive if you think the supports are, are missing from the enemy side. Um, helps Lina to aim the, the Dragon Slaves up the hill if she doesn't have vision there, but just good overall award. I don't think there's too much behind that. So I know you mentioned the idea of that Witch Doctor pick earlier on, the idea of Maledic could perhaps be decent against Zoning Out. In that case, what, will you th what, we, what we thought could have been a Nyx right. ends up being a Batrider here. Is it maybe similar in that idea, or is it not going to be as efficient? I, I think now that it's a Batrider, the cask might be a little bit more useful. Uh, well, we also didn't know it was the Juggernaut uh, you know, core in that spot, but cask into, let's say, a Torrent into a spin. If you could land everything and chain it properly, Ice 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 would be dead 100% of the time. Yeah. Well, he's going to run into that perhaps right away. They get the cask bounce, not back to him, though the Torrent misses. If that cask goes back to him, you got to wonder what happens right here. Probably first blood yeah. for Juggernaut. Um, the problem with landing that combination is that Kai needs to throw out the Torn pretty much at the same time as Cask hits him. Um, I, I think he waited a little bit too long, and as a result, they don't they don't uh, chain each, into each other. And so now Ice Ice is Ice 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 that is is obviously very aware of uh, the trial in here at the bottom. So we'll see how defensive he 
plays as a result of that middle matchup, though. There was a little bit of protection by Nix early on, but, you know, how much could he really have done? And Lena seems like she's off to a strong start against the Bristleback here. 6-0 Lena versus a 3-3. Bristle as bottom lane. They do land the combo eventually, so I thought for sure he's going to play defensive, not get them the chance, but that they do. Yeah, I'm surprised that the Ice 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 got killed there. He was right in front of his tower, perhaps uh, using it because, you know, as an offlaner, when you are in front of a tower, you just want to grab all that experience with the creeps. Um, but I think they, they punished him by just kind of diving him under the tower and getting a quick kill. Bristle, though, 8-3 and three now, so kind of keeping up with Lena. But especially if this ends up being a 1 versus 1, do you see Lena pretty much winning this matchup handily? Or? I don't think Black will die, but Lena's going to get a ton of farm, right? She's going to just push out the lane with Dragon Slave, grab all the runes, and all the Quill Spray is going to mean a couple more Dragon Slave to, to harass Black. Again, Black won't die here, but uh, Lena should have an amazing time farming, grabbing every single rune, and overall doing pretty well with them. Black actually has that bottle queued up. In fact, uh, going to be sending it out now. What is currently that ground courier, of course. Meanwhile, Kai roaming around aggressively on the Kunkka. And going to pick up that bounty rate. Nyx runs right into Tusk. Going to actually mana burn him. As he, that'll also take off the Clarity Potion. So it's a nice harassment coming up from Jabs here. But uh, choosing to get that mana burn from the beginning. I guess when he was harassing Lena in the middle lane, that kind of makes sense. Right. Makes a little bit less sense now that he's kind of left uh, the mid lane and is trying to roam around and do stuff. Still struggling to find that level two. Is there, being a middle bristle back here, do you see him maybe going a, oh, Kunkka, by oh. the way, trying to use an illusion to kill the <laughs> curve here. That's not going to work too well. So it'll be fine. Uh, but do you see Bristleback going maybe out of the norm from the earlier on Vanguard here? No, I mean, Hood Vanguard is pretty much standard. Um, I think the one team that kind of deviates from the norm is Team Liquid. They do like to pick up a mech, uh, depending on where the where the Bristle back is at. But to answer your question, I, I think we're going to see very standard item from Black. Although, if he does go mech, I, I would not be too surprised. That was a good heads up by Lena right there. I, I believe he... He saw the Nyx coming in. Yeah, he saw the Nyx coming in. He wouldn't normally use the, uh, the Dragon Slave there, but he's like, you know what, if you're going to burn my mana, I might as well use it. So he timed it pretty much right before the mana burn came out. So yeah, good heads up on his part. Just uh, those, those little things that you can appreciate. Yeah, speaking of the Nyx versus Lena matchup, uh, well, not not exactly in the lane stage. But I thought here is uh, it's like Polo Son. Tusk is going to end up falling. Yeah, Life Stealer doing enough right there with the open wounds and Silencer first thrown up. Yeah, so so going back to the Nyx in the mid game, a support Nyx could actually kill Alina. Uh, you just find her in a camp that's jung you know, she's jungling. She throws out the Dragon Slave. You spike the Dragon Slave, returning a ton of that damage. And then you do pop up with your Vendetta, you know, Impale, Mana Burn. And you can actually pick a, a, a Lina that's relatively farmed as a forward position Nyx. So yeah. that is going to be something that Japs will be looking towards to do. Well, Kai's looking to make use of this haste trim. He's just going to protect it for now as Lina's heading over. But Lina decides better. Okay, no, she just got the bottle. That makes more sense. Gonna get that first and then bottle up the haste rune. So good job by Kanka just sitting there, the captain that he is, not letting anyone else take it from them. Jabs is scouting out. Oh, he sees the courier fly right on by, but obviously couldn't get there in time to make a play on it. So now Luna has a haste rune bottled up here in the middle lane. You gotta wonder if she's gonna look to do something with that, especially being level six early. That ward that he dropped down was so powerful. Uh, he saw the rotation from both the Witch Doctor and Kunkka, so they do know, because normally d those kind of supports don't roam to that position in the map. They also saw that Kai had a smoke. So now, uh, yeah, smoke gets broken by Jabs in a perfect position. Eats the ward that's immediately placed. <laughs> Jabs, in that small movement that he did, I think just like, I don't know, won them like a pretty sizable amount in this game yeah. so far. Well, top lane, they're going to try to make the rotation up here instead, Kunkka. He's going up, has the X as well as that torrent ready to go. Life Stealer, though, he's just going to man mode into them. Obviously, with that rage, he feels a little more comfortable. They would like to get Silencer, but Silencer, as expected, is doing a pretty good job. Nuts here is he feels like something's up, so he'll be fine. Middle lane, Black does go down, though. That was a look at a play. It's always questioning with that bottled up patient. If it, is he going to make a play with it? And sure enough, he does. Yeah, Black shouldn't die to the die in this position, but I think the haste rune made was, was the X factor there. But uh, it also shows the strength of the Bristleback plus the Life Slayer pick. You see that both these supports, the Witch Doctor and Kunga, they're struggling to find anything done. I mean, Ice 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 did give the, the one kill away in the laning stage, but since then, these two supports have been relatively quiet. 
Missile ports back in. You do have Nyx nearby. Double damage rune. Impel hits, and Jabs is going to take it. Yeah, Jabs has definitely been an MVP of sorts so far, for Faceless at least. Yep. I am very worried for him, though. Look at him. He's only level two. It's, it's going to be hard for Nyx Assassin to pick up those levels. And as I mentioned earlier, his ability to actually pick off the Lina in the mid game is a very powerful tool, but he's he's going to get that heavily delayed. I don't know where he's going to get his you know level six, seven, eight. Looks like Juggernaut recently used his Omni Slash, actually. And uh, obviously didn't get anything out of it. That kill was from earlier, the first blood even. So yep. curious how that played out. but. Batrider is now running back in, level 5 himself. You got Miracles running at him. Out comes the Cask Stun. Gonna not fly over the ledge, actually, as Tusknet rolls in with that Snowball. But Ice 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 going the other way. Gonna keep applying that Sticky Napalm. Doesn't really have help coming in. He's just trying to take out Witch Doctor with him, if oh. anything. And the Ice Shard's also not gonna connect. Firefly flies right on over. And he's actually going to live, unless the Maledict? No, with eating that tree. Maledict. He should be fine. Oh! <laughs> not enough. Only Ice 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 makes that play. Three-man gank, kills your support, survives it barely. That was a level one Maledic. We were talking about Nyx being on their farm, but, you know, same thing with the Witch Doctor that's been yeah. roaming around. I mean, if that was a level two Maledic or a level two Cavs, that was, that was a kill. I mean, it seemed like it was a case of, I just want to take somebody with me situation. The fact that he ends up living is pretty absurd right there by him. But as you said, he's very comfortable on the hero, especially one that he is known for playing quite a bit, so. Does a great job at that, and now we're tied at two hero kills apiece here. I think what separates Ice 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 with other top ten off laners is his ability to judge when to back out and when to like just go in for it. And it looks like he's going to be able to pick up yet another solo kill. The roll is going to go to the Batrider, but the fire should be able to take down for this long. Eventually, one more auto attack to him in, and basically done. So, yeah, this runs him down. There's no support coming in the whole time because at the top lane, you see Miracle, he actually ports up here. And looking to push it out instead. So interesting transition coming. I don't know if there's a kill. They were pushing the top tier tower, so I guess if anything, that's why. But now Juggernaut's finding himself farming out the top lane. Yeah, I think they wanted to make the lane switch just to get Polis on some levels. Um, but I don't think he actually could stand the lane against Ice 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 now that he's got level six. The solo kill train might keep going here on the bottom side of the map. In fact, they're making a dive here. Yeah, he's fine as well. He doesn't have his lasso just yet. He does have magic wand though. Three charges, not the most, but gonna keep up the sticking Now That's it's a, a four kill. flame break. That is a kill. Yep. And he flies away. Port's coming in, but obviously it's gonna be way too late. So you're definitely right. I mean, as we see right there, he just can't handle it. And they're having trouble finding levels for what in the first place was, you know, pretty unique pickup of an offlane tusk. Yeah, Tusk just have no defensive play at all against a Batrider that's running on you. Shards just gets ignored because he just flies over it. And then uh, the Snowball does not help because you're rolling towards him back in the mid lane jabs. He does have Omni Slash. Will he go for that? No. It's too deep and there's two people here. That would be way too risky for Miracle. And now Black's actually just going to run down. Good old Arcane Rune assisting here. Kill, yeah, one more gets it. No, it actually blocks him out. It goes for the Omni Slash. Now Black has to run. He has his back turned, but the Snowball connects and down he goes. Uh, I mean, I can't blame him for chasing. That was just a great response, though. Yeah. Felt like he had the kill for sure. Just one more. But again, the, the, the timing of the Nyx, uh, not the Nyx, but the Tusk there, as well as uh, obviously the turn with the Omni Slash of Juggernaut. So another important kill with Batrider continuing to get really free farm and actually almost has the drums down here now at the bottom. But as I say this, the Torrent combo comes out. Now Miracle is going to be able to spin on top from someone with the cliff. Of course, causing an issue. <laughs> also, Dodge the LSA. Even though the Guna Blade, they want this damn Pat Rider dead. But will they get it and will they keep Kunkka alive are the two questions I'm asking. Looks like they're getting the kill and Kunkka will survive is the answer. So, oh, finally, they take out what seems to be the raid boss early on here. Yeah, but here's the thing, right? Your offlane Bat Rider has a killing spree streak. You know, I, yeah. I think I, you can make the strong case that Ice 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 has done exceptionally in, in the lane. And oh, yeah. Lugo, by contrast, is very, like, they're struggling a lot. Like, they, they have to pull Juggernaut, they have to pull Lina off the lane to make these kills happen. The Tusk is so, falling so far behind. And one thing I mentioned, you know, at the beginning of the, uh, the game is that they have to win the laning stage because their heroes don't scale into the mid game well in terms of damage output. They're going to make a roll here on Nuts. Yeah, top lane, the punch comes out, and there's the shards to block him in. So, nice rotation there, and again, finding any kind of farm for the Tusk, who, of course, is level 6 now. Uh, Walrus punch to secure that one, and Lena, we've kind of forgotten about a little bit, but to talk about her, she is Thompson net worth 
uh, especially after that right there, and actually already has her point booster finish, which yep. is soaring an arcane boot. So that Bloodstone's actually coming pretty nicely. I think Chipix is having a great individual game here. Picked up the solo kill against Black with a haste rune, rotating around, helping out all of the other lanes to salvage the situation. Had Chipix, Chipix been playing like a more of a subpar game, I think Mugos might have been completely out of the game, but he is putting the team on his shoulder right now. Look at how confident Lifestealer is at the bottom lane. He's pushing the tower down here. Uh, I guess they do have a little bit of vision of what's in the middle lane, but he has an arm lit, you know, of course the rage level four here. He's feeling very good about not necessarily being in a dangerous spot. He's right, but he may want to defend here in the middle lane as they're going to be pushing that mid tower. So he's doing some good damage down there, but how long will he wait down there is the question. In fact, he's TPing him now. Global Science comes out. Life still is able to jump to Lena actually right off the bat, and Lena will fall. The lasso also catches Witch Doctor, throws out that cast, but just going to delay his inevitable death as he calls the, the ghost ship coming out, but that was just simply to run if you're Moogle there. Yeah, Lena overstepped the welcome. I don't think they were expecting Nyx Assassin to be level six. And Lena was so far in there. He's actually like past the tier one tower where he got initiated on. So that was very unfortunate for him. Yeah, like I said, Lifestealer gave up pushing that bo uh, bottom tower by himself. Omni Slash catches Black with his teammate somewhere nearby. They get the kill, but at what cost now for Miracle as XY with that Walrus punch in the face. He don't give two craps. He's going to run after the Juggernaut, open wounds, and the Infest Bomb to finish the job. Nice and pills on on two. And Tusk, he doesn't have shards for another second. Can he maybe use it to save the day? No, he cannot. It's way too far away. Kai's going to be run down. And now Tusk himself needs to be careful. As does Lena, they're throwing themselves at them. Oh, no, this is going to be disaster for the Radiant side. Unless Nuts goes down, the Laguna play not enough, and it's not going to be from Tusk either. They're both going to fall most likely. My god. That was one of the best display of positioning and, and skill by XY. He basically baited that Lina for that fourth kill, just kept skirting in and out of the Laguna range. Like, if you just watch that re uh, replay again, where Lina, like, he clicked Laguna on XY about four times. <laughs> and, you know, he was armor toggling, he was, like, going in and out of the trees. Even, uh, you know, the start of the fight infested into the Batrider to dodge, I believe, a torrent. Just really, really good display of individual mechanic there. And Basis is really up by it quite a bit now. Yeah, another case of, uh, well, Black did go down, but, you know, he survived long enough on that Bristleback to, to eventually set up all that turn that happened, of course. And this Lifestealer, he is deadly right now. He's he's the top net worth in the game. He actually doesn't have his FS currently, but that's something else that, of course, is going to start coming online more and more, not only with the Blink Dagger inevitably on Batrider, but, of course, just Nyx himself with a Vendetta. Very good tool to use as we stress with that pick in the draft there, so... Looking for somebody in the jungle right here, but this is the power of Nyx, as I uh, said last game. Even though they didn't get a kill right there, it's still the presence and the time that spent for the Radiant side of playing so defensive, but they're going to go for a kill here, as it looks like uh, Lasso did connect Kunkka. Ghost Ship goes okay. on out, but all right, the X marks the spot, I guess. Uh, keeps him alive, but now Kunkka is still going to be run down. Global Science activated as well, and Flame Break to push him out. Trying to maybe stop Tusk, not able to stop him, but... They will get Kanka. Well, only get the one kill. Yeah, that, that could have went a lot worse here uh, for Mugos. And Black answers your question in terms of what build that he's going to go for. Just a standard Vanguard. Would not surprise me if uh, he pops a hood after that. But just look at the way that faces in, in terms of where they're playing uh, on the map. They have absolutely no respect for Mugos. Yeah. I mean, they can, right? Look, look again, this D board that's been, looks like, replaced uh, deep into the Radiant Jungle is allowing them to play the way that they are. Yeah, and again, every time Nyx has that ultimate up, you know that they got to be scared, and for good reason. And Batrider just about has that blink now. Of course, he went the drums first, but has made great value with that. And Merkel is just kind of charging on up right here. Feeling very confident with that Observer Ward, of course, but not going to find anyone. But instead, we'll have to start running back. He is being pinked out himself. Let's see if the play comes out here. Lifestealer Sage has been finished, so the Heavens Albert is now just about... Uh, taken care of for him. Heavens Albright, I mean, it's pretty standard stuff here, but you like it this game? Sure. I mean, it's great against uh, both Lina, that good right click, good against the Juggernaut. To a certain extent, good against the Tusk as well. But, you know, don't really have to worry about his damage output. I, I do want to highlight Jabs, though. Like, 10 minutes ago, he was level 2. You know, <laughs> yeah. we were a little worried about, you know, whether he's going to be able to have that mid-game impact. Now he's saving up for a Hannah Midas. Not even going for the Blink, because I feel like the Bat Rider is going to be the one that's be going to be initiating I just want to make sure that he has a good economy walking into the mid and leaking. Well, right as you say, Batrider initiating, and Fest jumps inside, and they're going to be looking for a target now. They see Lena. 
That's a prime target. And I'll see themselves, of course. Alina, though, unfortunately for them, is going to go a little bit too far away. And go the other direction. Hastrian spawn. Kai's going to go pick it up. Actually, the X marks the spot, helping to make sure he stays alive through it. Oh, nice, he's nice. being pinged. Reveals his position. <laughs> it's really deep here. Well, now they definitely know that he has a blink, and they're probably suspicious about the best bomb, but it's going to get off anyways, and Lena got too greedy. I mean, they knew that they were in that area, but she's like, let me just farm the stack real quickly, and that ended up being the death of her. Ghostship comes out, but now Kai's going to end up oh, falling. Oh, the rune ends right then and there, too. Yeah, open wounds, perfect time. Let's just say he planned that all along. Omni Slash bounces oh! over. Good job with the team support. Getting close enough right there, hoping that RNG paid off, and it certainly did. And Kunkka will fall the shrine pop for Miracle, but XY just going to sit on top of him with the auto attacks and other open wounds used. There's a spin out, but perhaps just delaying Ice Ice Ice, keeping his distance. Where's the taunt, Ice Ice Ice? <laughs> the misplays are huge. There you go. Ice 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 survives the last Omni Slash with like 20 HP, yeah. no problem. Stays around to Napalm a couple more times to give you slow, and of course had the flank break there as well. And it's, it's like you said, they had vision of the Batrider the, uh, the whole time. There is a good guess that the Nyx Assassin, or not the Nyx, sorry, the Life Slayer would have been inside the, the Batrider. But even without that, a lasso still is going to hurt you pretty massively right there. And you got to yeah. figure your team supports nearby. So. Like they, they, they could pull Lina up this cliff, right? Yeah. And then she would have just been stuck there <laughs> and died. So Yeah, it's a, it's a dangerous spot. And this Lina, we kind of gave her compliments as far as having a great start. But maybe a little bit of caster's curse right there that we applied because Lina since then is still struggling to finish that bloodstone. It seemed like she's going to have it two, three minutes ago even. But at 18 minutes now. He's at least the Vitality Booster, of course, has the Arcane Boots, which can split up. I think it's more so the, the nature of this draft, where Mugo needs to be pretty much slightly ahead every step of the way. And that mid-team fight, where the Lina got somewhat caught out, the Global, as well as the Nyx Assassin Viz was revealed, that, that really slowed down Mugo. And then the fact that these deep wards allows Faceless to play as aggressively as they have been, yeah. um, it's really been putting Mugo on the back foot. And this lineup does not go when, when they are behind. Nick's has seen over here. He's, he ran by a sentry ward, so they know he's over here, but again, they weren't really near him, so they don't want to spend too much time just kind of guessing where he's at. Instead, they're just going to fall back, do their own thing. Bristleback, meanwhile, has been doing some triple stack ancients. On his side, the good old Bristlebacks have your back turn and spam W strat. That's how the hero works, man. He's uh, good at doing that. Hit the defiance now. Is that bottom lane? Oh, yep. Japs goes down. Okay. Yeah, Japs just popped out in Viz, hit Miracle a couple of times. He, he baited uh, the Impel, trying to bait out Miracle's spin. Miracle just ulted right on top of him. <laughs> it's like, thanks for the free kill, buddy. Yeah. And, you know, Miracle definitely needs that uh, freebie to, to catch himself back up. <laughs> All right, he'll gladly accept that. It is a 7,000 net worth lead, though, despite that, in favor of Faceless. Uh, almost around an 8,000 or so experience lead as well. But now you have the Bloodstone finished on Lita, and they're going to go for an elite. Oh, even Laguna Blade. Oh, no. 20 gold, though. You know what? You're a positive guy. I like that. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, you know, again. Look at a blade. That's just one of those we can kind of laugh at. Look at a blade's a short cooldown, so yeah. so is ghost ship for that matter. Not the biggest deal, but yeah, twenty gold. There you go. Got something out of it. Polo Sun walk, uh, working on a Hanamitis, so looks like they are in it for the long haul. Um, he did. I imagine was working towards like, I guess Mech and Greaves. Like he, he had a chainmail purchased previously, but it's like decided to go for the Midas. I, I think looking, judging at the pacing of the game, the Midas could actually pay off. It is still a very big inherent risk because you got to keep in mind that slowing down your mech and slowing down your greaves means you're going to be subjected to the, the global for much, much longer. That mixed with his talent, which he just got right there, though, the 40% experience yeah. gain, that, I feel like it's not, not like core necessarily, but if you're playing this offline, you're kind of relied to get this farm and be effective for your team, especially being behind. I can kind of see what he's going for. That that 40% experience game plus Midas hits him to 15 relatively quickly. Yeah. Where taking the 150 snowball damage means he could one-shot the wave with his two uh, spells. So he can become a farm machine. The problem is whether he's going to have the time and place to, to get all that farm. Because Faceless is like starting to take multiple towers. This is a lineup that could take objectives relatively easily, be it Tier 2s or Roshan. So. I think Faces is going to really exert your dominance on this map. See, he's using that Frozen Sigil to kind of say hello to them and confuse them a little bit. But they kill it pretty quickly, and then they kill off the tower on top of that. So the Lyrical, you know, 
guessing if he maybe got that axe, perhaps that could be their, their victory. But <laughs> obviously that's going to be a ways away, even if he wanted to do that. Yeah, but it's going to be uh, it's going to be Mech Reeves after the Midas, and then uh, and then perhaps Axe, maybe, <laughs> just maybe. Here we go, Life Stealer Palm active, Bat Rider, the one with him inside, and that could be a free Lina kill. Though there is backup, got to be a little careful about this. Global Science as well to really secure. Nice match, still out though. Omni Slash now used, but it goes back to Life Stealer, and he is going to be able to TP out with that Rage active. That again, the execution of Faceless, they make it look easy, but. Just impressive play. The saddest part for Mugo is that they expected that gank the whole time, right? Miracle stood behind them, like you said, had help prepared. He had the Manta to do to get rid of the Global Silence. But unfortunately, I think even if all of the slashes hit on a single target, that wouldn't be enough to get the kill. Yeah. And he did deny himself, just to clarify as well, on Lena. But of course, down to eight charges now on that Bloodstone. So that, as always, whenever you pick that item up, that's got to sting a bit if you die shortly after. And Dropping down charges. Bristleback, meanwhile, the his own Heaven's Halberd. All right, so they got two of them now. And him a life stealer. This Juggernaut and really the Lita even are going to have trouble getting auto attacks off, but that evasion's also going to be an issue. Yeah, Mugo wants to play very aggressively right now. They know that Global is off cooldown, so that means a couple of these heroes, like Witch Doctor gets to channel a full death word, Kunga gets to go off with this whole combo without interruption. Uh, that's why they're so actively seeking for kills, but Basis is not going to give it to them. Marco going pretty far up, but again, feels very confident with all that teammate support and now the Mantis style finish. So, Nyx Assassin, 1560 gold. Mentioned before how he de decided to go to Hannah Midas. Made sense with the pacing of the game. He's level 10 here, uh, but going to be working on that blink now and almost has it. But Batrider Lifestealer, we've seen this before. They're looking for another kill now. I don't know if they're going to get the opportunity unless somebody goes deep into the jungle right here this time, but it kind of just goes back to the idea. So what? If they're if they're playing this defensive, <laughs> you know, they're not getting much farm right. across the board. I think the only person that combination cannot kill is Miracle, although that might be tested relatively soon here. Yeah. And he's by himself somewhat. They're, they're, they're kind of running over, but yeah, they're, they're looking at it like, do we really want to go on this guy? He is a tough one, as you were just mentioning right there. And now backup's coming in, although it is smoked up, so they're really hoping. Smoke's going to break now. And now the war yep. sees it, so... Ooh, blink there away, Ice 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 knows. All right, he's Easy blink, and look at that. That's four players bottom lane. You look at the top tower. That's going to be destroyed now. Great job by Faceless again, just spreading the map, buying Ooh. space. Paul Sun going for the blink next. I like it. This is the ultimate answer to all of this, right? Like, as long as he's not interrupted by Globo, he can save the Lina that's last old, or whoever that's last old, so... I think that was the idea with the, the Tusk pick, the Blink Snowball save. It's very, very precise. It takes a lot of uh, skill to pull it off, but yeah, these are pros. I assume that you know, they know <laughs> what they're doing. You would hope here in the TI-7 regional qualifiers that you know, you're almost expected to be able to make plays like that. And understandably so, with so much being on the line, of course. But Roshan, he's going to be done here by Faceless, and I don't see Google stopping this one, XY. Uh, I'm sure XY is going to be the one to pick up the ages here. No Let's see it uh, going to Bristle back. Although Bristle has died three times and Life Stealer hasn't died a single time, so okay. <laughs> there you go. All right, I mean, does that make sense to you? I think the idea with the Bristle getting the Aegis is it allows them to play really aggressively up at the high ground, which then allows your Life Stealer to hit the building. I think that's the, the idea behind this. And he's a very good reset hero, too. Yeah. It's not like he has massive cooldowns. That's like, oh, crap, I used him, and I'm coming up. <coughs> that we've seen before. So 13,000 net worth lead, though. Continuing to look good for Faceless. Nyx is coming over. Let's see if we can find anybody Juggernaut in the vicinity, but not close enough. 2,000 gold almost saved up by Juggernaut, so with a pretty obvious Manta style first. But he's not showing us, at least, what he's going for next. Do you think it's obvious in your mind, or...? I think Defusal Blade is fairly reasonable, although picking up a Heaven's Halberg of its own might be enticing just to, like, hey, Life Slayer, you can't right click that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but I think Defusal Blade is likely to be the next candidate. Here comes Faceless. Yep, yeah, and guess what? They find Lina. Said that before. Global Silence, even as well. That's a dead Lina. They want Tusk on top of that. Impale's going to be down for another seven seconds. 
So pull us in. He's evading for now. Has that snowball up. So even using the hand of Midas <laughs> in the midst of the fight. Value. He's like, it's on cooldown. Get that value out there. Yep. But he is going to eventually die. It's a good thing he did, I guess. Walrus punch. Hughes just simply delays it. But again, the prime target, you got to figure in immediately. And then uh, something thrown in with it. So now five charges on the Bloodstone. Feels bad, man. Yeah. The, the road to zero Bloodstone charge game is not the game that you want to be playing as Alina. And I know this is, uh, obviously this is kind of hindsight to say now, but something I've always kind of talked about whenever we see the Bloodstones and I get Lena, you know, very popular candidate for it. Is there logic to, is that what makes Bloodstone, you know, maybe not worth it in the end, get more of this safe item, get that Yules instead and so on? It's a very good farming item. I mean, obviously not at this point because you're down to so low charges, but when you freshly pick it up, your mana regen is just up the roof. So it allows you to play... Uh, relatively quickly, like you could walk through a jungle, just bow down every single camp. You could pop in the lane, push out two camps or two, uh, two cre uh, creep groups, and then uh, move on with your life. Yeah. So it's a strong farming item. Um, unfortunately, now that it's down to all these charges, it's it's not the best. Now it's not so good. Fifteen thousand, more so sixteen thousand net worth for Faceless. Mm -hmm. Can experience around fifteen thousand itself. AC just finished on Life Stealer. Bristleback, by the way, going for the Radiance which actually he's almost got finished. He has 4,300 gold saved up here towards picking that up. And, man, with the Radiance on top of, you know, how tanky he, he already is. Yep. Ouch. So the, the one thing I'm surprised about is the lack of a gem coming out from faces because this is how you really close out the game. Ice 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 is queuing up for one right now, so better late than never. But uh, Miracle? Yeah, he's getting gun on here, but just going to TP out. The team support, they're... Running after oh. Nix is going to stop the end. <laughs> it's Lena. Oh, no. That could have been worse. That could have been like a Ravage cancel on two TPs. But looks like Kunkka cancel his own TP on his own will. To yeah. Try to rescue the Lena. But as a result, they will lose two. That's so unfortunate because, as you mentioned, Lena goes down. And now Kai, I mean, he still could get out of here somehow. But it's going to be a difficult task. Now he's, he's delaying them quite a bit. What could have transitioned into a bottom tower push, maybe. So I mean, only Nix is following him. They're <laughs> just standing That's next true. to each other. Like, he knows Kai doesn't have a TP, right? Because he just canceled it. Yeah. All right, so it does, there is a kill. Just a matter of time. Cooker just really gave out. He's just like, you know what? You got me. All right. I'll go down in peace. But, yeah, it ends up being two. So, yeah, obviously they didn't stun him out. But he can't blame for wanting to save Lena. Lena, though, the struggles continue. That feels, feels bad, man. I'm, I'm surprised on Nuts didn't just, like, just beeline over there. Like, That's plus two end right there, man. <laughs> yeah. It's smarter by the minute. Oh, bottom tower. It's going to draw to about half-life here. Black, he's tanking it up. Of course, has just about enough for that Radiance finish, but he also has the Aegis, remember. So he's definitely not worried. There's that gem pickup that you were just talking about going into the last fight. Batrider now has it, or he purchased it, I should say. So he doesn't have it yet, but eventually going to pick it up. Yeah, what do they do here? I mean, it's like, sure, they can maybe kill Black, but he has the Aegis, so. Yeah. And killing Black entails you using Laguna Blade or Omni Slash. So even if you kill him there, you're not going to kill him a second time. Looks like he's going to just tank it all. <laughs> Maledict fight to it? Go to Defiance. There's the bop, and uh, trying to finish it. OK, they're going to get the Aegis here. Whew, none of those used, but there we go. It's going to come at a cost power to jumps in. They catch Tusk, however, the Global Science as well. We'll stop any follow-up. The Omni Slash was already activated before that, but Tusk goes down. No buyback for him. And now the Rax is very vulnerable. Black, he's back up. Full life, full mana. X, Y, he's just going to run away. The ward is kind of tickling Black, if anything. Just runs down Witch Doctor. Gets the kill on him. So that's a Rax kill on top of it for Faceless. I don't know if there's really much hope after this for Moogle, unfortunately. No, I think there was not much hope uh, 10 minutes ago yeah. when Faceless was uh, playing in the jungle so aggressively. I got to say, uh, MVP, as per usual for Faceless game, is definitely the Batrider. Had a killing spree in his own lane, you know, uh, one against three. Able to dominate the mid game with a whole bunch of... Every time Life Slayer popped inside of that Batrider, it was a kill. Yeah. Or more. Yeah, very strong laning presence. And again, they're having that Life Stealer threat. As well to work with just fantastic setups and yeah. again, overall a great team effort from Faceless right here. So uh, that's what I was talking about in the pregame. The, the idea of Moogle, like their one chance is maybe there's going to be some rust on Faceless being a little bit since they played and this being the first game of the round robin. I think other teams have to be a little scared because Faceless is looking pretty damn good. Not to be overconfident with it, but they're making a statement that they're a team that's directed with most certainly and 
as expected, one of the favorites here in this round robin stage. But again, if you're Moogle, now this game's not even over yet, so let's not even get into that too much just yet. But it's a 23,000 net worth lead. With all of that said, and they are down the bottom racks on yeah. top of that. So, like, what's the decisions to be made here if you're this radiant side? Like, where's this comeback idea? Find a random pick. Uh, you can't actually be faceless in a 5v5, even like a 5v4. Just you need to randomly get a pick here. Lifestyle is a good start. You know, get him dead and try to extend the game that way. Well, they're pinging him out up here. They know he's in the area at least, but, well, faceless, they all of a sudden have a lot more resources themselves. And now it's Moogle, the ones that have to play very defensive. That Torrent's going to miss. Pops the Rage going after the open wounds applied to Kai. Impale actually hits Witch Doctor. Kai's doing a good job of evading for the time being. Nice job with the Cask stun as well. And Witch Doctor just fades into himself, and he will end up falling over there. Tusk and Conker are both going to port away. And oh, Lina did get picked off down here as well. So that's. Yeah. <laughs> Seems like that happens every fight, though, unfortunately. Had they just lost the Witch Doctor and was able to make it out, that would have been, like, the worst. But, you know, again, falling down. Looks like Juggernaut, uh, in terms of the item choice that you were questioning, it's going to be a Blink Dagger and then back into a Defusal Blade. Okay. Um, so that helps the, the mindset of, like, let's start the fight off, you know, 4v5. Or let's get us a better split pushing power as well. But all of these, like, you know, just a little bit better, just a little bit more, to me, isn't enough. Mugo just... Need something uh, a little bit short of a miracle happening, or else it's not it's not going to cut it. Well, it's a good thing they got miracle, huh? <laughs> uh, that's been overused. Bristleback's level 20 now. He just finished his Crimson card as well, so he's got the life steal that he picked up. We mentioned the Radiance that he had earlier. Of course, still has, so they got those several kills to them earlier in the game, but now I don't think they have the damage output to really be focusing on that. Maybe... Maybe a nice Witch Doctor Death Ward with that Maledict up, perhaps, and, you know, Laguna can play Nuke. But we talked about that bottom push. If you use all that on just simply the Bristleback, then your team around you is probably going to be getting wiped out and still in favor of Faceless. So not to be negative Nancy over here, but it just continues to be a bunch of, well, negative, unfortunately, for Moogle. But, you know, getting that pick, Juggernaut, is that saving grace, if anything, that defusal with the Blink and the Manta. As you were talking about it, now he does have that butterfly queued up. Obviously, that's a very ambitious item to try to get here, but you got to try for something. Yeah. I mean, his item is progressing very nicely. The butterfly kind of matches up decently against the basher that you see on the life store. Uh, but let's not forget the fact that there are two disarm blades on the side of Faceless, Heaven's Halberg. So even if he's surviving, you know, the next step of killing people is still going to be rough for Miracle. Another big in-fight engagement could be happening here soon. Jabs there, smoked up. This double sentry put down. They really wanted to make sure. It's on Merkel, kind of jumps in, but it's not good. It's BKB activates immediately on Batrider. And now the Global Science, a very defensive maneuver from Faceless right here. Life Shealer, he's looking for a target to maybe go on, but not going to find it. But now they got the Global Silence to use, so again, some positive. Not the worst. Like, that was the first time that Mugo moved out of the base without losing half their team, right? True. So again, trying to be uh, more of the positive now yeah. for them. But that gem, as expected, is doing work in the hands of Nyx Assassin here. And rewards, and you just look at the map from the vision of Moogle. It's it's nothing. They, they're playing really blind right now. And they're still trying to kill a tier one tower middle lane at 34 and a half minutes. I think it's time to back it up here. Well, they're going to get backed up because Merkel's going to get picked up. Witch Doctor tries to go in to save the oh. day. That's not going to happen. He's dead for 68 seconds. And they're going to get more out of this as well. They kind of felt like they had to defend the or the uh, Juggernaut right there, and it just wasn't going to take place, man. Barry goes down on that Witch Doctor. They clean up Tusk, and Graf's going to make a death ball push here in middle lane now Yeah. To finish. Japs made a huge play there. I'm not sure whether you caught that on camera or not, but as Juggernaut was getting Basso and getting gone on, the rest of the team realized very quickly, okay, Juggernaut's dead here. Let's just all get out. So most of them channeled their TP, and Jabs went in okay. and hit a three-man stun. That's why then. Okay. Yeah. I thought they were just sticking around saying, you know, we got to save him, but if that that makes a lot more sense then as far as uh, keeping him there. So ends up being the four instead, and now easy set of racks here in the middle lane. You got to make the way top, I'm sure. In fact, Bristleback's already up here working at the tower. And trying to get those mega creeps. Juggernaut still has 15 more seconds before he's up. Lena is up with an arcane rune and BKB ready to go. BKB popped by Pat Rider though. Ooh, good play. Nice X though. Yeah. Too bad that was in front of the fountain and not, you know, any of the yeah. previous ganks. 
Good reaction, but again, may not end up too much in the end. Here we go, the last ditch effort from the Laguna Blade. Really doesn't do too much damage out of the Bristleback right there, as expected with his back turn. And he just continues to run four staff away. They're going to catch Life Stealer pretty low. He does have an invest, though, worst case. But he's resetting now the armor toggles. Looking to go back in with the Bat Rider. Global Science is activated. Bat Rider, will he be jumping soon? He's got the blink ready to go. He wants it, baby. He's going to jump in. There's the Infest Bomb right in the midst of it. XY is so low on life, but not low enough. They can't finish the job. Miracle spinning away now. Still going to take off Bat Rider. Another four staff away, though. He'll be just fine. The shards ain't going to block them out. The Shrine to use onto Juggernaut right there as now Polis is sitting nearby, but there's three dead. Now they're just going to go back for the actual objectives and get the Mega Creeps. And Faceless looking to be 1-0 now here in the round robin stage. Well, I'm going to say the Tusk pick did not really pay <laughs> off. I think the idea is good. Uh, you, you get the punch that can control the life slower through the rage. Yeah. You get the, the Blink Snowball play that could help allies, but... You know, he was just always on the back foot, so. Good idea, but uh, did not really work out the way that it was going to work out. That it did not. So very well played on the part again of Faceless right there, moving on to 1-0. and oh. So Faceless now, you know, good thing for them too, you know, perhaps uh, could have been overlooking this opponent a little bit, you know, in Mugo being.